What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Austin, this is Preston, and today we are going to be going over blood tracking. Um, we're at least going to cover the parts that have to do with what we have already covered with my dog Ivy. She is 13 weeks. We've covered quite a bit in the time that I've had her. I got her at about 10 and a half weeks, um, almost 11 weeks. It's been a very exciting, I mean, very exciting journey. Um, and there is quite a bit to cover. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, from what she was doing just two weeks ago, and we were so excited and to what she did just last night, which you guys will see in a few weeks. I mean, yeah. wow. Looking forward to putting those out. Yeah. Um, so I guess let's start with the very first step. We already made a video kind of going over it in detail. But the very first thing that you have to do is associate the mark and the action. And the mark is basically just your command that you're gonna to give to a certain action. In this particular case, I use the word find it or the phrase find it. Um, use whatever you guys like. I know um, through my own research, I've seen a lot of people use the word hunt them up or hunt or whatever. Find bone, that was another one. Uh, for the shed, for the shed hunting fine bone, that's actually what I use for shed hunting. I do use a difference in each one, um, or I'll say fine bone, one of the two. Uh, you do actually do want to be consistent, so that is something that I've I had a hard time with because I just tend to say what I feel is good and not be consistent for the dog, which causes confusion. So do your best not to do that. <laughs> but well, we're learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're learning with us. You're bringing you guys along in this journey. Um, I'm honestly surprised it's worked as well as it has. Oh, it's been crazy. Um, I've just basically researched this, used behavioral training that I've known from my past, implemented them together, and came out with a dog that is performing far better than I ever imagined. Um, we thought she would be here at six months old or later, not yeah, the not stuff she's weeks. the stuff she's doing. I definitely did not expect until at least hunting season with a live deer in a real track that I hadn't touched. And I mean, I, I, I'm excited for you guys because I'm telling you right now, he calls me the master or whatever, but I'm not, I'm just a dude. And if I can do this, you guys can go get yourself a lab door retriever, take the lab you already have at home, whatever the case, and you guys can take it, implement what we're doing here and come out with a similar result. And I just, I, I don't doubt it now that I've seen a young pup do it. Um, so anyways, let's move on to number two. Like I said, step one has a more detailed video, so I don't wanna harp on that too long. Step two is to do a small drag. Um, it's going to seem overly simplistic, and especially if you're doing it with anyone, they might even be like, this is pretty dumb. <laughs> because what you're doing essentially is you're going to uh, tie your dog up or if in my case I had somebody that would help me so he held the dog on lead and kind of kept it calm but what a what you do is you tie the dog up bound it up whatever you got to do and then you're going to take a piece of liver um, which is like a sweet very strong smelling blood thing that you can let them eat if you wish you can also do a piece of hide, or you can do <clears throat> um, a hoof, which is my particular favorite because it's Ivy's favorite. Um, you basically take it, attach that to a piece of string, and you're gonna just get your dog hyped. You're gonna, you're gonna try to tease it with it, tap it with it, get it going, get it to where it has this drive where it's biting at the bit, wanting to get at that. Um, and then you're going to have that person or your lead hold the dog back and do a very small drag. I'm talking maybe 10 feet and drop it, go back to the dog and then give your mark, your release command, whatever you're saying, whatever you're going to say to get that dog to go and find it. Um, in my case, I just use find it. So when we did this, he held the dog I drug that foot 10 feet and said, find it. Now it is important that you use blood scent if you are not using the liver. The liver is going to contain blood anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. But when it comes to the hoof, 
or the fur, you are gonna need to have some type of blood scent. And this is important because this is the very first association that you're gonna have in this find it command outside of food and you want him to know what blood smells like. That's going to be your most consistent tracker along the way, and your digital gland will come in later. Um, after that, you basically, I'm just gonna do like three, maybe five sessions or sets, if you will, um, of just like 10 to 15 yards and really listen to your dog. When we were doing it, I got to about five I think it was I can't recall perfectly but it was about four or five and then the dog kind of started to wane interest his kiddos came out on the porch and then the dog was kind of very excited about other things lost its patience we'd hit about that 15 minute mark and as I've said before on other videos that is about your limit I mean you're dealing with a puppy in my case you're dealing with a puppy if you have an older dog I think the rule is still beneficial. I mean, 10 to 15 minute training sessions tend to be far more beneficial for any type of training, even with behavioral training. Um, small, consistent trainings, like small trainings every day are much better than one or two train, one or two long training sessions a week. A hundred percent. They're going to retain way more. And the, the main benefit is you keep their interest and you keep it fun. And when we're doing this stuff, guys, you want to keep it fun. If this dog's not having a good time and it feels like it's forced, it's just not going to give you that output that you're looking for. So keep it, keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it fun, and just have a good time with the dog. It also makes it easier for you because I know in my particular case, sometimes all I have to do is wake up 30 minutes early and I can go out and train my dog for 15 minutes. And before I go to work, I already feel like I did something with my dog. Like I already I already tired the dog out. We all know that a tired dog is a better dog. Um, and it, it, it gets them mentally and physically. So it, it's, it's wonderful for your dog. It's wonderful for you. It creates that bond early on. All of these things are great things, but definitely keep it short. The next stage that you're gonna move into is extending that drag out. You're gonna want maybe 30 to 60 yards and you're going to want to drop blood that whole way and drag whatever the item is. Obviously, again, if you have liver and you're doing liver drags, that's going to be dumping blood anyways. It's just a bloody product. So, But with our case, we had a hoof, so I had to drop blood. Um, but you do that for 30 to 60 yards. And again, you're going to do about three sets, a total of 15 minutes or so. Um, if you can get five sets and the dog does that in that time frame, awesome. If you have time, it's a Saturday or something like that, you can do a, a session in the morning, a session in the evening, and a session at night, and do three to five sets in each one. Um, but by keeping it short, that dog's still going to have fun and you're going to get way more training time and that dog's going to take in way more than it would if you just combine that into one session. Um, the following step after that, after you get out to 30 to 60 yards, keep in mind you are this entire time up until you get to 100 yards, keeping your lines straight. You wanna keep it straight. We're not ready for the dog to be doing any type of turning, any type of bends or S's or anything like that. You're just trying to associate, hey, when you smell this, move forward and you'll find your reward at the end. Um, when your dog does come to the end of its tracks, if you're using liver, like I said before, you can let it let the dog eat it. But if not, let your dog play with it. I mean, get it going, let it bite. I'm not a big fan of tug of war, so I don't really let the dog play tug of war. I might add a little light tension at the end of it to kind of get that dog excited about it and keep wanting to get it. And I hype her up about having that toy. Um, but that's just keeping it aside, keeping it to where that dog is interested. And when he gets to the end and sees how hyped you are, finding this foot becomes this dog's number one priority. <laughs> yeah. And I can speak to this 13 year old puppy and it's drive to find this foot has done nothing but skyrocket. I mean, oh yeah, we kind of had a drive problem when we first, probably that first week, we were a little worried about her drive to do these things, but don't be worried. Keep doing these things. Keep working with her. And yeah, 
I mean, make it super exciting every time she succeeds. Make it a game. Yeah. Keep it interesting. And yeah, a hundred percent. Her drive just in the last two or three weeks is has skyrocketed. Has skyrocketed. Yeah. And then what has happened as a result of that is her results have just done yeah. tremendous. Insane. And so that drive increasing at the end and keeping it short like this has done nothing but make her want to go longer. So she wants to push past these 15 minutes, but then she's left with, ah, nope, you gotta wait till later. And that's keeping her like, I want more, I want more. Um, so then you get these much longer tracks later on and she stays focused the whole time. Yep. And that is what you guys are going for. I mean, you really are. The next step after you guys get from 30 to 60 yards is to obviously get it out to 100 yards, like I said. Um, once you get out to 100 yards and you can do that successfully about three times, you guys are ready to introduce a bend. You can do a bend out in a field. Um, so just do 50, do a hard turn, go about five yards, and then finish out the rest of your yardage. Um, if your dog can do that, like it's no problem, you guys are okay to move on to the next step, which will be go ahead and keep your line straight, knock back the yardage to that 30 to 60 mark, but move your terrain into the woods. So you're gonna wanna move that exact track that you started with earlier on with your 30 to 60 yards straight as an arrow, but put it into the woods. The reason that this is a big deal is because you're introducing a far bigger amount of sense. I mean, you're just having other interdigital gland scents, deer hoofs, multiple trails going every which way from Sunday. I mean, there's just a lot to distract your dog. Squirrels, every type of animal you could think of that could possibly walk through your part of the woods. Um, so keep it short and sweet. You want that dog to make the puzzle piece connection between, oh, what I was doing in this field is exactly what I'm doing here. And look, it's straight, just like I thought. So do that straight. What I would recommend if you get to this spot and the dog does not find it and is having a hard time is don't be afraid to back step, you know? Um, take it to the point where you're like, okay, dog's not doing it. Go back to letting your dog visually see you drag it into the woods. Um, at this point in the process, um, as we've discussed in previous videos, uh, we are having Ivy stay away in her kennel in the car while we set these tracks. No worries, car's running, she's perfectly safe. Uh, but we keep her away from it and she doesn't have to see it. But if your dog is struggling at this point, don't let that discourage you. Don't let that make you feel like you're far behind or anything like that. It just means that puzzle piece was difficult for that dog. And you need to just take a step back, reconnect the pieces. And when you do that, you're gonna find that your dog will make that connection and then you can hide her, bring her back, do it again, and work from there. You're then gonna implement those same steps of furthering that distance, but inside the woods. Then introduce the turn. Once you get to that point, this whole time you're dragging your product and dropping blood heavy. You're doing at least a drop every few inches on these tracks. Um, and that's just because you want that, heavy, that scent heavy. You want to set your dog up for success. You want your dog to get this. You don't want her to fail all the time. Um, that is where the next part comes in. So no worries. Don't worry about that. The next part is to go back to the field or keep it in the woods, but do a shorter one but you're going to decrease the amount of blood that you're using. Um, we, we went pretty harsh with IV. I did some pretty big jumping from session to session. Um, but once we got to the point where she was doing 60 yards in there with a turn into the woods, I was like, okay, press, we gotta, I gotta decrease this amount of blood. It's just too easy for her. And read your dog, you know, let your dog be the tell on if you move forward in this process when you take this stuff off or take a step back. Um, with Ivy, she did great. So we moved on and I immediately went to a drop of blood about every six feet. 
Yeah, it's crazy. Which was pretty crazy, but you'll see in videos, um, I believe when I started decreasing the blood, my track that I first decreased blood on was, um, it was like 100 yards, and I, I did it around uh, a mound of dirt um, in a field. So right on that track, I decreased the amount of blood that I was doing on that track. She was also downwind. So even though I decreased the amount of blood, the wind was in her favor. And that is something to keep in mind. If you're going to be decreasing the amount of blood, that doesn't mean you can't assist that dog in making the connection by putting that wind in its face. That would honestly be better for all of these beginning steps. Um, because you're just, you don't need to advance that far that fast. And once you can see that your dog is making all the connections fine up to this point, you've lessened the blood, you're uh, even lessening the amount of dragging. So if you're dragging a liver or you're dragging a foot, you're bouncing that along instead of doing a complete drag. That's the next increase of, or I guess I should say decrease of the amount of scent you're putting on the ground. And, but increase on the amount of you require of the dog. Um, after that, once you get to that point, now you guys are getting to this super fun stage. I know we had a blast doing it. Oh yeah. It was, I mean, pretty much from there, once you decrease, you've introduced turns, you've gone out to about a hundred yards with less blood and less dragging. Then you've gotten to this really fun point where you start to get out to these pretty crazy adventures. And something that I realized, and it just happened to be by God's grace because I had the resources to do so, I had Preston here be able to go out and set tracks for me, um, or mock trails, whatever you want to call it. So I was able to have Preston go out with all the supplies while I stayed in the car with Ivy, and he would go set out a track, and you guys will see videos on this. On my first time in, essentially, I'm going in blind and the dog is going in blind. And this is very beneficial because I'm a big believer in energy shifts and dogs' abilities to read that. Um, energy, they're able to read your body language. Um, they're just able to tell. And whenever we would go on trails, I would definitely have shifts and when I was feeling confident and when I was feeling a little discouraged or whatever, or maybe I would tug on the leash a bit, kind of in the favor of that trail, or kind of like, ah, I know it's this way, I'm gonna pull her this way, that way wind hits her, whatever. Those are fine in the beginning. Um, and I say it may even be necessary in some of these early stages, but you are gonna wanna get away from that because it's just not realistic. If you go out on a, tra on a trail to track a deer you've never even heard of, you're, you're, let's say it's a call and you're actually going out to some guy you've never even met and he's like, I shot him, I think the shot was good. Matter of fact, I don't even know where I hit the deer and it went that way. <laughs> and there's just a little bit of blood at the start. That's what you gotta work off of. So you're not gonna be able to assist that dog. Uh, meaning the very first time that dog runs into an issue and it looks to you, you're going to be like, uh, I don't know what to do. And then boom, that's, it's failed. You failed. Yeah, but it takes, it takes one time for that dog to lose the trail or not be able to get on that trail, but just one part of the trail that it loses and that deer's gone. Or at least you're, yeah, or at least you're just to this point where like you are relying on that dog. So it is no longer up to you. You can't do anything. You're basically just the guy that holds the leash. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're relying on that dog. Obviously, when that time comes, you hope that your dog has been trained to self-problem solve. And yep. that is where this comes in, guys. That's why this is so big. Um, as you guys are watching a video uh, that we post, I don't know if it'll be, yeah, it'll be later than this video. Be a little while, yeah. Um, but you'll see a video where I do my first one and we'll, we'll, we're gonna be speeding those up, probably like 8X or whatever on some of those. But it's just because it was, it was a learning curve. It was a huge learning curve for me. Um, I was getting very agitated and I had to kind of take a breather. And 
at the end of it, um, and we'll leave this part in the video, I mean, at the end of it, I, I had to stop and be like, that track pretty much failed because of me. I mean, my energy was shifting. I was relying on my human intelligence instead of relying on her nose, which is far more trustworthy than my intelligence. <laughs> um, but I even pushed her up the hill at one point when the trail actually went down. But I was blind and I was like, this trail looks really clear this way. Maybe he walked up that way. So, and then she was going downhill and I actually corrected her. So, I mean, it's just a very good thing to have. So if you have anybody that is willing to help you, once you've gotten to this point where you have less blood, you're doing further tracks, you're already in the woods, all that stuff, get a buddy, get somebody to go out and set that trail for you. And if you can do that, you're going to see that your dog will significantly increase in its ability to problem solve and do these tracks. Now, in our state of Kentucky, there is a leash law when you're tracking to do um, wounded game. So if wounded game is involved, private land or not, you do have to have a leash on the dog. But if you are on private property and you are doing a mock trail, you do not have to have a leash on your dog and you can run that dog off leash for training purposes. I called a game warden to have this uh, established and verified and I was confirmed that that is okay. So you will see in our videos that when we are on our private property that we have permission on, um, the dog, I take the dog off lead to let it go because when she was going through brush and stuff, that leash was getting caught up and touching her neck and I've done so much behavioral training to this point, every time that tension touched her, she felt like she was being corrected. And so when I took that leash off, I definitely saw a change in her behavior. I start to see her problem solve and do circles, um, which is all good. She, when she would lose track, she would come back and circle back around, find where she left off and go. And none of that would have been possible on leash. So that is why you guys are gonna be seeing that. You will see her off leash for sure. Um, but obviously due to laws, we, when it comes down to real tracks and when deer season gets here and we've actually shot game, you will see a leash on there. Um, but yeah, that's just side note. It, th that's pretty much where we're at. Um, that's, that's about all we've done. Uh, we have gotten to the point where she did about a 250 yard um, stent in the woods, uh, ran out of blood. In the video, I think we said it was three ounces, but I looked at the bottle. The bottle was only two and a half ounces. So there was only two and a half ounces of blood on the 250 um, trail. And then at the end of the trail, he still went, I think he said like another 20 or 30 yards. He'll yep. mention it in the video, actually, where he says like, I ran out of blood right here. And then the rest of it, he just uh, drug the foot along. The dog did recover it and got to the end of that track. But then after that, um, we did what is the next step in the process. And this is where you start to introduce water crossings. Um, the reason we went straight to water crossings and not just a creek or a dry creek is because for Ivy, a dry creek is flat ground. It, it did, it made no difference. Um, we had done a track earlier in the day and she had to cross a creek that had light water running through it. She immediately winded it, jumped the creek and went on trail. Um, so, and that was our first blind. So I had no idea where it was and <laughs> she went straight on it and the trail was heavy there and she knew it. Um, so that's why we, we waited and moved on to this instead of maybe taking an easier step, which I would have done. I would have said, let's use a smaller creek. I don't want to jump into such a big creek. Uh, the creek we used was flooded at the time. Yeah, so it was running for, pretty good. For the creek. For, yeah, the, for creek. the creek. It wasn't it was like a flash good. flood creek. Um, but it was running, had good movement in it. And there was only a few rocks that had sticking up. Uh, I didn't tell him to do this. Um, but he did benefit the dog a bit because those rocks that were sticking up, he put a couple drops of blood on those rocks. Crossing the creek, a drop at the, over the edge. Once we went back and got blood, we laid this last portion of the trek. Um, 
and she completed this small track, which we also recorded for you guys. Um, but it basically, how long was it, do you think? The whole track going across the creek was probably 60 yards. Okay, so we laid about an additional 60. It went, it went downhill some, and then crosses the creek, and the foot was on just right on the other side of the creek. With this being new to her, a new, like, introducing another puzzle piece essentially saying like hey look deer can cross bodies of water and you got to track them across it or down it depending on what happens um you don't want to challenge them too much again set your dog up for success so in this particular case he set it right on the other side of the creek so as soon as she made the connection which you guys will be able to see in the video when she does it but when she made that connection she went across was able to win and she comes around and actually finds it and it would end up being a great track. I was highly impressed by the end of the night. I mean, we probably hyped on that too much, but I mean, yeah, we're just super impressed with this dog and what she's been able to do. And again, guys, this isn't necessarily my expertise, if you will. I'm, I'm learning with you guys. Um, this is just what we're doing. And so far, I just can't believe the results. And I have full confidence that if you guys did the same with your dog at home, that you guys would see the same results. And I'm excited for that because that means more dogs out in the field with you guys. <laughs> wow. Well, that was very detailed. Thank you for all your wisdom and knowledge on this. <laughs> Until next time, guys, please like and subscribe. We'll see you again. See you next time.